Fighting in Toronto, well, it's been a long time coming for me for having my pro debut and having any local fights. So putting the two together, this means a lot to me. It's going to be a big, big event. So it's good to be a part of the show. I know he's a southpaw. He he had his debut fight on TKO, and he's gonna bring he's gonna bring the 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 war. So I'm just ready to fight. Yeah, there's gonna be blood. There's gonna be blood. Uh, for me to become somewhere else when it's not my home, uh, I'm not used to it. Usually, when I fight, uh, the whole crowd, half of the crowd, is uh, friends, family, and uh, supporters. So it's gonna be something new. Uh, do I like it? Of course. I feed off of it. Uh, for me, I don't really care. They're gonna cheer afterwards for me anyway. So that's the most important thing for me. Toronto, Ontario, are you ready to start the fights with me? Say yeah! yeah! Then here we go. With no further ado, let's start the fights. First, making his way out to the blue corner, please welcome Serge Dankos. Welcome inside Rebel Nightclub as PFC 13 gets underway, titled Unfinished Business. And we'll get to that later on when it comes to the PFC flyweight title fight. But I am Reed Duffy, pleased to be joined by Canadian MMA icon Robin Black. Robin, what a fight card we've got coming up tonight. And Pete Trevino's opened it up right away for us. <laughs> yes, he did. Thank you, Reed. It's good here to be here with you. Man, the environment is cool. Listen, it, first off, it's about the athletes. We, we come around, we meet a bunch of coaches, we see a cool room, there's you and I and, and Mr. Throwdown, but it's these fighters that we're here to see. They're the ones that are gonna risk themselves, they're the ones that are gonna put themselves in the line of not only getting hurt, jeopardy, but also a failure of setback, of you know the, the feelings of, of loss when, when you don't achieve what you've set out to do. So these guys take big risks and they're doing it here for us tonight. Well, the first man out is Serge Dankos. He steps in, making his professional debut. Robin, 3-0 and as an amateur, was Lil Drago. He's a Romanian, but trains out of Gatineau, Quebec. And now he is looking to really make his impact in the PFC cage. And his opponent making his way out to the red corner. Please welcome Noah Crosswell. The natural Noah Crosswell at a Crosswell MMA in Hamilton, making his pro debut as four and six as an amateur, Robin. But when it came to competition on the amateur circuit, Noah took on anyone and everyone. So the four and six record might be a little bit deceiving. Yeah, and that's the level it's at out here. You know, when guys come up and they fought once or twice, or they're debuting as an amateur, it's shocking what they're physically and mentally capable of. And you're right, Noah and his brother take really tough fights. They come from a martial arts family, Crosswell, martial arts as you mentioned and they train with Jeff Jocelyn and the Jocelyn family so really like that is how you grow as a martial artist is you travel and you share information among family and among people with the history I'm excited to see this kid fight I'm excited for him to get his pro debut I did make one slight mistake off the start it is Noah making his MMA debut Serge Dankos did have one fight that you would have been involved with I Robin did call that. he won over Alexander Gomez at TKO 48 by ground and pound in the first round so it's a, a little bit of a different scenario. Dankos has already gone through the first fight jitters. Yes, sir. Noah's going to have to deal with them tonight. Yes, and he did very, very well. I did call that fight for the TKO promotion. And uh, you can see the, the body types here. Look at Dankos. He's a little sturdier, a little shorter, a little more compact at 135 pounds. Noah's going to be a little longer, try to be more fluid. Uh, when you can get on top of somebody and punch them and elbow them and rough them up and fatigue them and discombobulate them, that's a really powerful thing. And that's how Dankos won that first pro debut, was like that. And I expect him to try to do that again. Crosswell moves beautifully in space, especially for a young man. So you want to grab him around the waist, body lock, or get him around the thighs, drag him to the ground, get on his back, or get in his guard and start punching him in the mouth. Now, the tough part for that is going to be getting inside of Noah Crosswell, who, as you mentioned, Robin, is very long, and he can keep you at distance 
and the experience that he has training with his brother Nigel, who is another fighter, very long, very lanky. That could come in handy yeah. here. He knows how to keep a long fighter outside, keeping a shorter fighter outside. That could be right yeah. up Noah's alley. So, and the key to it is the mentality. You don't want to rush, and you've never experienced this kind of pressure in this kind of place. It's very meaningful, your pro debut. So you have to not get over aggressive if you're going to fight on the outside. Let's go back into the cage. The official announcements with Mr. Throwdown. Here we go, PFC Fight Fans. Your first contest is being brought to you by USG Canada, Sovereign Extracts, and the Gambit Barber Shop. Scheduled for three rounds in a Bantamweight division, here are your fighters. First, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks trimmed in black. Standing five feet seven inches tall, he weighed in at 135.8 pounds. He's a Kung Fu specialist representing Patnaud MMA. He comes to the PFC cage undefeated with a record of one win and no losses, with that one big win coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of and representing Gatineau, Quebec, ladies and gentlemen, here is Serge Lil Drago Danko. His opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black trunks trimmed in yellow. Standing six feet tall, he weighed in at 134.2 pounds. He's a freestyle Taekwondo specialist representing Joslin's MMA. He comes to the PFC cage for his professional debut fight tonight. Fighting out of and representing Hamilton, Ontario, ladies and gentlemen, here is Noah the Natural Crosswell. You notice how different Referee they Matthew are Rocco made. with final fight instruction. You've got Serge, he's quite intense, you know, and Noah's trying to have that flow, that relaxed that. flow going. That times. might have something to do with the man in Follow his corner, Jeff Joslin. Yes. If you want such gloves, do so now. Three back to your corners. So if you're watching this and Ladies you're not and gentlemen, this Canadian. PFC Bantamweight matchup will be decided in three rounds or less. <laughs> I love it when Mr. Throwdown had to pause for that. If you're watching this and you're not Canadian, we're going to reference a lot of Canadian OGs of martial arts. Jeff Jocelyn, one of those, fought Josh Koscheck in the UFC. Just a tremendous Brazilian jiu-jitsu exponent who started off with a kickboxing back and karate background. And, right? and a wonderful guy. Absolutely. Fantastic guy as Noah Crosswell looking to take the center of the cage and back Danko off, Danko rushes in heavy. So Noah moved in probably a little more aggressive than he would have wanted, but you have to allow the fight to happen, and it's a very tricky thing when you're starting out, even your first 2,000 sparring sessions. That spinning back fist did land, but it wasn't clean. But you had to allow the fight to unfold and not rush it, especially when you're the outside guy like Noah is here. That's what you want to do. You talked about the intensity, Robin, on Serge Dankos. He looks very comfortable, even mm -hmm. though it's only his second fight professionally. Super focused. Look at his eyes. Just right, hyper focused. Hook kick against the open side of the body, which, if you have your right hand forward, I suspect he is a right handed fighter. Comes up through the Chinese martial arts uh, approach. And often that is right hand, your strong hand forward, which is why the hook kick and the side kick look so good here, because it's your strong leg forward as well. And he's really loading up that spinning back fist. Noah continuing to take the center of the cage. Danko seems very comfortable yeah. around the outside and lunging in. He looks good. He looks good. The distance attacks are working for him early on here as Noah tries to back him up. If you're watching and you're like, wow, these guys are good. Oh, hard Shit. left hand from Dankos. Yes, they have you know, eight, ten amateur fights each, but this is between them. There's one pro fight, and look how comfortable they are. And this is just the beginning tonight as Danko steps forward. Went for that calf kick. I feel like if you're looking at Crosswell and you were a coach, maybe he's too relaxed. You know that feeling that he's a little too allowing it. You want to allow yourself to express the fighting, but you don't want to allow your opponent to do what he wants. This is exactly what you talked about off the start, Robin. The shorter fighter in Dankos stepping in, waist lock, trying yeah. to drag Noah Crosswell to the mat. Yeah, when you can take, join your hands in the small of the back. It's a nice place, whether we call it a waist lock or a body lock. Then you lace the leg and then you bring him down. Now he's going to look to move to mount and he's basically in mount here. He Noah, nice attack, roll. Yeah, he may attack the arm bar here right there. There it is. Right in front of us, trying to yeah. stretch out that arm. Now the cage is in his way, and that's a problem. And Noah's out, and he wants to get straight to his feet. Nice scramble for Noah yeah. Crosswell. And he yeah. came up, throwing a yeah. left hand as well. And he's 
busted open Dankos. Yeah, and sometimes it's just the way that your weapon and that target are moving through space that make the collision. Didn't look like the biggest punch, but when the head's moving towards the accelerating knuckles, sometimes it'll cut him open. And he felt that one. That's a big shot he ate. Boy, that is a brilliant point, Robin. As Danko steps forward, Noah's backing out. He's using that mobility. Watch for Noah to get his right leg going when he is an orthodox. That spinning kick will take a lot out of that. You know, this is a sprint recover type of athlete here. It's an anaerobic athlete that you're seeing here, Dankos. And so he may fatigue later in a round. You'll see him recover in between, but the second half of the round should be a good time for Crosswell to start moving and throwing. Noah Crosswell starting to pick up a lot of those spinning attacks, Robin. He's timing it up a little better and now forcing Dankos to come straight forward. That is a tough one. That's a rough one. You saw the hands go down. Oh, yep. he caught him up high with a left yep. hand. Now he right can, hands underneath. He's hanging in, and good for him. He's hanging in, but he wants to answer with his hands, not his feet. Dankos' left hand, really yep. a weapon, now falling down into that guillotine choke, and he got him on the inside. That was a crazy little frenzy of movement. Now, if Crosswell would have fought his way through another second or two, he might have been able to see daylight, but that's what your brain does. That's not somebody saying, I want to tap now. It's somebody's brain saying, oh my God, we're in danger. We're going to go out, let's tap. You, If you fight through that brain's natural desire, you may get more seconds, but you, you get what you get out of yourself on the night. Two great young fighters really, really brought it back and forth. Real ebb and flow to that fight. Danko started off strong. It felt like coming off the armbar attempt on the cage, Noah Crosswell turned the momentum in his direction, just Dead. forcing Dankos a lot, but he was comfortable in that moment. Stepped in, gets the fight to the ground, and pulls through with that guillotine choke. He got those hands clapped quick, Robin, and that was the end point. Yeah, and it was the timing of the choke. And I don't mean just the time it's around the neck, but you had a guy hurt and frenzied, and so his brain is naturally in protect ourselves mode. Then you throw that guillotine on, and your brain is like, we're in trouble, I think we're done. And it's one of those things, you literally, it's a long journey of training yourself to go past what you think you can handle. But it's a great experience for a young Noah. I thought he fought fantastic. Uh, it's certainly not a judgment. It's just a, it's something you can do to retrain yourself to go even further. Back to Mr. Throwdown. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause, please, for both of the fighters in this cage. Your tap out came at three minutes, 26 seconds of the first round for your winner by guillotine submission, Serge Lil Drago Dankos. And coming into the cage at this point is my broadcast partner, Robin Black. He's going to have a moment with Serge Dankos, who wins his Serge, second fight. Serge, good to see you again. Two. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Serge Dankos. Let's take a look this direction. He popped you pretty good coming up there. As you were getting up, that shot that cut you open, were you dazed? Uh, no. A little bit, I, I felt it, but uh, I was okay. I'm used to getting hit, and that's pretty much it. That's two fights and two wins for you, man. That's a great start. This was a tough young opponent with a lot of experience. Yep, it was a good, uh, good challenge, like always. I took the fight two weeks notice, so lost 25 pounds. Training camp was quick, but uh, I did it, man. I'm happy. I'm grateful for uh, my team, my Sifu, my mentor who showed me everything I know. Well, my friend, go and enjoy your night. Let's hear it for Serge Dankos. One last thing. Uh, happy birthday to all the women out there for uh, Women's Day, especially to my mom and sister over there. Love you guys. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, a very respectful Serge Dankos, and he looked real good for just his second professional fight. Stepped in, as he mentioned, to Robin, lost 25 pounds, taking the fight on two weeks' notice.